The next technique will be the knee slide. I started using this technique a lot when I was uh, a blue belt because uh, that was like the easiest way for me to stabilize the side control. I remember having a lot of trouble to stabilize positions when I was on top and uh, that was like a big reason why I was like mostly like playing bottom and like having trouble to pass the guard. And uh, when I started using more of the knee slide, I started doing better, stabilizing the position. And uh, once I recognized that, I think uh, I started enjoying more to be on top. So like this is like probably like the, my favorite uh, technique on top, especially for the way I like uh, to stabilize uh, the side control. It connects really well with the knee slide. And I think it's really important to, to have a position that you like to stabilize your pass because uh, you, can, you can combine many different moves, but the way you finish and you hold the person down when you get to the side, it needs to be something that you feel comfortable and you feel strong. So a lot of people, they like to use uh, chest on chest, and I'm gonna explain the reason why I use the knee slide more than chest on chest. But uh, probably the most common that you guys are gonna see will be chest on chest, knees on the mat, like close uh, to your partner, controlling the head and getting the underhook. The problem for me was that being light was always uh, a problem to hold this position because uh, I was not controlling the hip and whenever I try to hold the side control and I'm controlling the upper body, the legs would be really strong pushing me and uh, making me lose the position. So this was like my main trouble going through the collar belts, getting to a side control, having my knees on the mat, controlling the head already. But the person being stronger than me, framing, and then uh, because the, the hip is free and there is no control of the lower body, the person would be pushing and like throwing the legs over or the knee in front of my chest. So whenever I was uh, trying to hold the side control and I had the control of the upper body, chest on chest, I was never controlling because of this technique, like I was never controlling the, the legs or like the hip. And once you apply pressure here, the person will start pushing you and uh, start swinging their hip side to side, throwing the legs over or getting the knee in the middle. Being light and fighting against flexible people will make it even more difficult. I recognize that every time I was passing with the knees light, instead of uh, landing with the chest on chest, I was landing in this position here, which had like the side of my body creating a line that was going across his body. And uh, that way I was uh, blocking his legs from uh, going in front of my face. And uh, that's, that was like the moment that I navigated towards this technique and like I started using that more often. Because now whenever I stabilize in this position, my elbow is blocking the hip. My back is creating this line that blocks his legs from uh, coming in front of my chest. And the more he pushes my chest, the more he's pushing his own legs. And then eventually the person would end up getting tired and uh, I wouldn't be able to stabilize. So for a lighter person, like this was like a game changing changer because uh, now I was not only moving side to side, but I was able to stabilize the pass. And uh, that's when I start studying more this technique and I start, uh, I start connecting to all the other techniques that we connect that now. So for me, like this was like the main detail that made me realize that this was like the way I like it to stabilize. So whenever you guys study my fights, you're gonna see that it doesn't matter what technique I initiate, the end is pretty much the same. I try to stabilize with this posture here because uh, I find it much easier for me to hold the position. So this can be something that you guys also like uh, try and uh, do specific training, trying to hold your partner from here. 
and do a specific training, holding your partner front here. And uh, see each one you feel more comfortable. See each one uh, your body like holds the position better and like you feel that during the fight will give you a better connection to other techniques or a better chance to stabilize uh, the technique. And then uh, you try to use the one that you feel more comfortable to stabilize every move after that. For the knee slide, like very similar to the long step posture, I'm gonna be pretty much in reverse de la Riva first. And then uh, I'll be fighting the top knee or like the foot, if the person is using the foot. So if they're using the foot, normally I try to use any kind of C grip to eliminate the foot and uh, I start fighting the knee. So I get his knee close to me and I get his foot behind my back. Now he's fighting with the knee and the arms. This grip is really important, so I try to use the grip on the cutter. This is what's gonna control the distance and will maintain that pressure on him. If I don't have the grip on the cutter, for sure it will be harder to stabilize the position. Then the next step will be to cross the hip line and uh, get an underhook. So whenever I start putting pressure and I pass the hip line, look how I push his knee. A lot of times I have my hand on the inside. This is another great detail that I like to use. I'm gonna have to fight against the arms. Normally at this point, the person is sideways and they're either framing or they're trying to get an underhook. My head position will be really important because uh, if I go too far with my head, passing his shoulder line, I'm gonna expose my back. So like, I try to keep my weight all the way on my hip and keep my head on top of him so I can fight for the underhook. This is what's gonna give me mobility to get the underhook. If my head start going up like this, the underhook gets deeper and now my arm is pushed over the shoulders and I lose balance. So whenever you pass the hip line, you should always be pushing yourself closer to the hip. So look how my head is always going here, look, because now I have mobility to get the underhook. The underhook can be deep or it can be a shallow underhook. It doesn't really matter. You try to see each one you feel more comfortable. You can initiate submissions from here, but the most important is to stay in a solid base with your knee on the mat. The grip on the collar, I try to maintain it all the way to the finish. So I, if I let go a lot of times, like the person will recognize that I lost control and they will start pushing harder. So I try to keep the grip on the collar. The grip on the collar also helps me to avoid the person from hiding their head. So this can be a another thing that can be difficult. If the person is hiding their head and you don't have control, especially if they start getting under hook, now your head will be passing the shoulder line. So I like to keep this grip because uh, I use that as a way to push his face to the other side, like maintaining his shoulders on the mat. Important detail that I like from this technique and I use very often too, it's my knee position. My knee can go on top of his leg to push. This is the main difference between the, the techniques that we use now and uh, techniques that we use to watch like from uh, like 20 years ago or like 25 years ago. Before people used to stay on the knees and use their hands much more to control the legs. Now, when you guys watch the techniques, you guys are gonna see a lot of leg work and people normally try to set up the grips in a way where they can connect techniques or stabilize the pass. So if I have a strong grip to stabilize, I will try to use leg work in order to release the hooks and, uh, and cross the hip line. So let's say I'm fighting against uh, him and he's using a strong reverse de la Riva. But like, I can't pass, like, the more I put pressure on him, the more I feel that he's pushing me over the head like this with the reverse de la Riva. Instead of switching my grip to the pants and pushing and losing control of the head, which is gonna compromise my ability to stabilize the position. I keep the grip on the collar and I use my knee now. When I use the knee to break his control, it will be easier for me 
to get tighter with the knee slide. After you pass the reverse lahiva, a lot of times the person will keep using their knee as a way to frame. I like to do leg work from here as well. So I keep my knees on the mat, I move my leg closer to the head and I go with my hip around his leg. Again, so if I get here, I already passed the uh, reverse lahiva, my knees on the mat, but in order to defend the position, the person using their knee, and a lot of times they're even using their arm like this, I don't let go and try to push the knee. I step forward, I call my hip will move around. Once I land in the position, I try to stay tight. I don't go closer to the head. I escape and I stay with my body across his body near the hip. Normally the person will be trying to push. Yeah. I maintain myself here, look, toes on the mat, my hip off the, off the ground and uh, trying to hold as much as possible. Every time he does hip, do hip escape, he does hip escape, look, I use my foot on the mat to follow him and I use this elbow to block his hip. One technique that you guys are gonna see a lot is the knee slide from the, the La Riva. A technique that it's used in a way to break control when the person is using uh, the overhook here and uh, you're having trouble to jump over this leg and go to reverse the La Riva. You guys are gonna see a lot of this technique here where the person, they initiate a small jump just in order to pinch the leg and now they jump from here posting the hand and shooting the underhook. This is a strong way to initiate a pass. A lot of times even if you don't stabilize the pass, you're gonna connect with different techniques and you're gonna be able to get your dominant position. So stay strong on bottom. He's like framing is strong. I'm having trouble to pass. A small jump over his leg will eliminate this leg now but I still have to fight against his hip and arms. Whenever I jump to the side and I shoot the underhook, I'm gonna get on the inside of his legs. Right now, look, his knees are on the way. Whenever I jump, because I'm shooting for the underhook, I create this line here that blocks this leg. So I do this. And I block, his leg went all the way behind my, my back. And then from here, you either stabilize or you can connect the technique depending on how the person reacts. Sometimes you're gonna do that and you're gonna end up with the knee in front of your hip. So if I do this and the knee goes in front of my hip, same thing I explained earlier. I try to attach myself to the upper body and then do the leg work. Stabilizing the position. Two drills that I like to use for this technique that help you to understand the move better and to get faster and more precise with the move. The first one is normally how I like to warm up in, uh, in seminars, moving side to side and squatting in the knee slide position, reverse the lahiva. So I move side to sides, like I initiate here where my hip uh, has a good mobility. I shuffle to the side and I have my hip low and my knees pointing into the same direction. I try to get my shoulder and head in the same line as his, uh, his knee and now I move back. So I use uh, open hand because like it's more, uh, this drill, it's more focused on my legs than uh, my grips. So I do like a push up with my arms, like I move back and I do the same thing to the other side. Just a way for you to stay comfortable with the move side to side. Try not to be stiff in the position. If you're stiff like this, like, normally it will be hard for you to create connections and uh, to relax in the move. It's important that you have mobility. So look how my hip is going side to side. And uh, the position is not stressful for me, which allows me to stay comfortable and rest in the neutral position. If I'm very stiff, normally I'll get really tired 
squeezing the move where I'll get really tired just staying in that posture. And uh, that's gonna make me feel that I don't want to stay in the position. And that's when you see people just accepting the sweeps. So moving side to side, trying to relax, trying to stay comfortable, trying to find the pace that you feel that you're doing really good. One thing that it's important too, and that I teach a lot in seminars, is that every time you're drilling, you should find the pace that makes you comfortable in the fight. Some people are naturally faster and they like that pace better. And some people like to be a little bit slower and more precise with the moves. I think like that, there's a way to be good using different pace. You don't have to be the fastest person doing the drill, but uh, you need to be comfortable and you need to have good vision when you're drilling. If you have good mobility, good vision, and you're comfortable, being comfortable will allow you to do more and uh, to have a better vision. So that's what you're trying to do when you are drilling techniques, especially single techniques like this. You're trying to stay as comfortable as possible and find the pace that you're not exploding the whole time and getting tired, but you're moving with the purpose. So again, just side to side, comfortable. Good base, good vision, trying to drill this move, but visualize what the person could be doing and uh, what uh, the gap that I have to attack in. And the second drill, it's from here. I give the leg to my partner. I jump over, post my hand, and shoot the knee slide, getting closer to the head. Again, this move is normally the first step of the technique. The connections that will come after will be part of uh, your understanding in the technique and like part of you being creative and reacting to the way the person is defending. And uh, the better you are with these connections, I think the more you're going to be able to succeed after you do the first knee slide. Yeah.